Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. In today's video, we're going to continue with our first person shooter by adding a headshot system. And also, in addition to the ammo drop, we're also going to add a health drop. So let me go ahead and show off the headshot first. So if a player gets shot in the head, they die instantly. And you can see, in addition to the ammo drop, which is this black part here, you also get a health drop, which is the red part in the background. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in and see how we can do this in Roblox Studio. All right, so we're going to start off by working on the headshot system. To do that, we're going to be opening the script that should be in the server storage, and it should be called damage. So inside the script right here, this is the line of code that does damage to the other player when they get shot by a bullet. And what we want to do is to check which body part the bullet hits. So if it hits the head, we're going to do more damage. If it hits any other part of the body, we'll just do the normal 30. So what we're going to do is we're going to say if other part, so this is the other part that the bullet comes in contact with. So if other part dot name is equal to, and then head, then what we're going to do is we're going to say humanoid colon take damage. And this time instead of 30, we're going to set it to 100. Okay, so if it's not the head, we're going to say else. And if it's any other body part besides the head, we're just going to do the normal amount of damage. And if you want to, you can do other body parts. So let's say you want to make the torso maybe 50. Then what you can do in that case is just add an else if statement. So you do that by saying else if. And then you're going to define your other condition. So let's say other part dot name. And let's say that's equal to humanoid root part. So this would be like the main part of the player. So if we hit the player there, then maybe we want to do something like 50 damage. Or if you want it a little bit higher, maybe 75. All right, and you can do this with as many body parts as you want to. So while we're here, let's do one additional thing. So let's add a sound whenever the player gets a headshot. So to do that, you can just use the toolbox go under the audio section, and then search for something like headshot. Go ahead and just try out a couple of them and find one that you like. Headshot. All right, so that one works for me. So for this one, I'm just going to insert it into the workspace. So over on the explore menu, I just click on the workspace and then click on the sound. So up here at the top, we're going to start by making a variable for the sound. To do that, we can say something like local headshot and then we'll do underscore sound and this is going to be equal to game dot workspace dot and then at this point it'll be the name of our sound so in our case the name of our sound is headshot in all capital letters after that we're going to play the sound whenever the player gets a headshot so that'll be this section right here so right below this line right here what we're going to do is say headshot underscore sound colon and play all right, so let's go ahead and try it out and see if it plays the sound. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and shoot this player in the head, and we're going to be checking to make sure that they die instantly, and also the sound plays. Headshot. All right, so everything looks good. So my player dies instantly when they get shot in the head, and we also have that sound playing. So next, we're going to go ahead and move on to the health drop. Okay, so now to make the health drop, we're going to go under the leaderboard script that should be in server script service. So from before, this was our section that created the ammo drop. So it's going to be very similar for the health drop. So what I'm going to do is just copy and paste the section. We'll change this to health drop. And then we'll just change the variable name. So instead of ammo, we're going to say health. For now, I'm just going to get rid of these two lines because we're going to write a separate script for it. And there's still a few more changes we need to change up here. So instead of ammo drop, let's change it to health drop. And then for the color, let's change it to red. All right, so let's just go and double check real quick to make sure all the things are changed. So up here, it should say drop underscore health.
All right, and everything else looks good. All right, so the next thing we need to do is drop down here. And just like we did a function call for the drop ammo, we're going to do one for the health. So we're going to say drop underscore health. And then we're going to pass the same information, which is where the player dies. So you can just copy this part right here and paste it inside the parentheses. And just to make things a little bit easier to read, I'm just going to space out these lines a little bit. All right, so what we're doing is we're calling the function for the drop ammo, which is going to run this function up here. And then right below it, we're going to run the drop health function, which is going to run this part right here. All right, so now let's just go ahead and test and make sure when the player dies, it pops out that part. And then after that, if that's working, then we'll write the script for it. Okay, so that looks good. I see my ammo drop right here and also my health drop right here. Right now, the ammo drop is working and it gives me more ammo. But if I try to touch the health part right now, it doesn't do anything. So that's the last part that we need to do is write a script so that when I touch this health part, it increases my player's health. To write the script for the health drop, we're going to do that in the server storage. So go ahead and click on the plus sign, and then we're going to be adding a script. Go ahead and rename the script to health drop. For this script here, we're going to start by saying local health is equal to script dot parent. After that, we're going to make a function that will run whenever this part gets touched. So we'll say local function. The name of our function can be heal. Inside of the parentheses, we're going to pass other part which will be the other object that this part comes in contact with. Now inside this function, we're going to make a reference for the humanoid and also the player. So we'll say local humanoid. And this is going to be equal to other part dot parent colon find first child. And then inside the parentheses, we're going to say humanoid. After that, we're going to make a reference for the player. So we'll say local player. And this is going to be equal to game dot players colon find first child. Inside here, we're going to say other part dot parent dot name. After that, we're going to say if humanoid and player. So if it was able to find a humanoid object and that object is also a player, then what we're going to do is one more check. We're going to say if humanoid dot health, if that's greater than zero. And the reason we're doing this is the part might accidentally touch the player that just died, and it might disappear because it touched that player. So to fix that, what we're going to do is make sure that whichever humanoid object that we're touching has health greater than zero. Okay, so if the health is greater than zero, then what we're going to do is we're going to say health colon destroy. And then after that, we're going to say humanoid dot health is going to be equal to the original health. So humanoid dot health. And then we're going to add 50 to it. So this value right here, you can change depending on how much health you want to give the player. And let's change this up a little bit. Rather than putting the value here, let's make it into a variable that we can store up top. So let's do heal underscore value. And then up top here, we're going to define that value. So we'll say local heal underscore value, and we'll set that equal to 50. That way, later on, when you're going through the script again, you don't have to remember what that value meant. It's stored in a variable that's easy to reference. And anytime you make a change in this variable right here, it's going to update it down here as well. All right, so the last thing we need to do for the script is link this function to the touch event. And we can do that by saying health dot touched colon connect. And then we're going to connect this to our function. All right, so let's go ahead and run the game, and we can check it out. All right, so right now my player is damaged, so I'm going to kill this player to get the health drop. Headshot. And we can see right now that it doesn't work. And the reason for that is we didn't actually attach the script that we just wrote to the part. So let's go ahead and do that real quick, and then we'll try again. Okay, so to attach the script to the actual part, what we need to do is go back to the leaderboard script. And what we're going to do is we're going to say local health script. And we're going to say that's equal to game dot server storage, which is where the script is located. And then we're going to say find first child. 
And then we're going to put the name of the script, which is health drop. We're going to make a copy of it by saying clone. And then after that, we're going to attach it to the part by saying health script dot parent is equal to our health part. All right, so let's go ahead and run the game again and see if it's working now. All right, so we'll give it another shot. So we'll go ahead and kill this player. Okay, and then we'll go over and get the health drop. And we can see when I got the health drop that it restored a good portion of my health. And if you want to, you can either increase or decrease that value. Alright, so that's going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed, and stay tuned for the next one.